at February 15th of this year, it was 45 years. It's been said, time heals all wounds. It's been many years since we drove down that road. And Fred Wills will tell you that is not the case. He was uh, a guy from Mississippi, fought in World War II in the Philippines. He, he thought of his family a lot. Let's go back in time. February 15, 1977. The place, the house in Woodenville, where Fred and his family called home. We moved to that house in 67. From what I know, at the time my father, he told us the day before, he says, you know, I get these phone calls from people and I pick up the phone and there's nobody there, they hang up. And they figure that my dad got up that morning went out to get the mail and while he was doing that they called and there was no answer. All of a sudden the door gets knocked down and unfortunately he got his gun out and then they ended up having a confrontation. Our Unsolved Northwest team asked the King County Sheriff's Office for more information and what we received was a picture of the house and a short synopsis of the crime. We needed more. I mean, we're here at uh, University of Washington Library, which has a pretty extensive um, collection of microfilm because there's not a lot about this case. It's one of the older ones that we are covering on Unsolved. I think this is probably the most comprehensive article of the very few that we found. So it took 10 minutes for them to figure out where the call is coming from before they can get there. The detective with King County, at the time King County Police Department, mentions Lieutenant Richard Kraske. Yes, I joined the uh, Sheriff's Department in February of 1961 and stayed there until March of 1990. In the 1970s, of course, we didn't have DNA. We had blood, blood spatters, <clears throat> probably fingerprints. You had to methodically go by hand through the files, big old filing cabinets, and card by card, trying to find somebody that would match the fingerprint. So I'm doing the story on uh, the Billy Wills homicide. Why do you think this case is still sitting there, unsolved? Well. It's still sitting there along with about, I don't know, what, 2,400 other, 2,400 other cases in Washington State that are still open cases, unsolved cases. When's the last time, go back to some of those cases, when was the last time it was tracked if it's a closed case? When was the last time you heard from uh, an investigator of any kind? Probably three years ago. They're constantly trying new things. Unless you've got a cold, cold case squad, that, that's a specific assignment. That thing probably hasn't been tested since the day it was put in the file. Seven percent. It's not a good number. Most in Western Washington don't have a cold case unit. I know everybody has a problem trying to get information on those cases, which I think is a disservice. I really do. From what the, the police have told me, I mean, there are things that happen that um, they are not telling anyone. Have a good day, gentlemen. It's been 45 years since Fred lost his father. Like I told the police, I, I kept my same phone number when I left there so that they knew how to get a hold of me. Even after so much time has passed. They may not ever find who did it. This wound still hurts. Most likely the people that did it are gone, but it would be nice to answer some questions in our minds that bug us every day.